Hello, and welcome to another episode of Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my YouTube channel about my knitting, basically, and other life things. Um, today, I have to introduce you to somebody new on the podcast. Let me just go get him. Hang tight. I'd like to introduce to you my new co-host. This is Blue. Blue is our new puppy. We got him last week. He is a Welsh Pembroke Corgi. He's 10 weeks old. He has one blue eye and one brown eye. And he will be my co-host. Although he probably won't contribute much to the knitting, given he does not have opposable thumbs. Nice shot, Blue. Thank you very much. Blue is now going to go back to his very important um, nap, but he'll be working on the production side of this podcast um, as we go on. So that's been a big, uh, I guess, development in the world of Jolene. Knits a lot. Jolene has knit slightly less this week. <laughs> um, because we have a puppy. And did you know that puppies can be a little bit of work? They don't necessarily sleep as much as you think they should. But it's been um, a lot of fun getting to know Blue and watching him uh, and our daughters interact. And um, more so watching him and my husband interact because it turns out he just loves my husband, which is not a bad thing. Um, so we uh, got a puppy and things will change here a little bit, I guess. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll still be able to knit a lot. Um, that's my plan anyway. Uh, but let me show you what I have been knitting on. And um, maybe you can uh, live vicariously through our puppy and my knitting. Um, first I should tell you what I'm wearing today. This is the Litmus Cowl. It is a pattern by Amy Florence. It is um, just knit in the round, uh, and it is knit out of nomadic fibers in a color called Ready Player One. Now, I did not make this knit. This was my Mother's Day gift from my oldest daughter. She uh, has taken up knitting lately, mostly because her homeschooling is uh, not as challenging as she would like it to be, and also she doesn't necessarily like being at home, but knitting has made being in school a little bit easier. So I set her up with a litmus cowl and she knit, 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 knit. Um, and this was my gift for Mother's Day this year. I really like this pattern and I really like how this uh, yarn turned out. It's a self-striping sock yarn and you can see the stripes are, if you were to knit them as socks, they'd be quite narrow. And on the litmus cowl, they don't quite go all the way around, but I think that gives um, it a real interest and it goes with everything. So that's fabulous. Um, she's actually knit another one since finishing this one and she's working on a third so um, I guess I'd really recommend it for beginner knitters or people who are looking to fill some time while they're homeschooling um, so that is my uh, what I'm wearing today and I, ha I do have one finished object for you today well it's almost finished um, and let me tell you a little bit about why it's not finished I uh, last year participated in stash dash stash dash is um, a challenge simply that uh, for knitters it's hosted by the knit girls podcast which is a great podcast I highly recommend it and the knit girls podcast uh, has this event every year I've only just participated last year and the idea is just to knit as much of your stash as you can from May and the end of May May I believe this year it's 28th to uh, the end of August sometime um, I just participated last year and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was good fun and it was also really uh, good to see how much I could work through um, in terms of my knitting. Now there's really no rules for this knit along. You can do whatever you want. So you can have an almost finished project um, and as long as you sort of finish it up during Stash Dash, you can totally count it. So I'm going to make up my own rules as I go. Um, I think a lot of knitters do, but I think the point is just to try and work through as much of your stash as you can. So I'm going to be showing you an almost finished 
outline tank. I finished all the major knitting of it, as you can see. Um, I guess I haven't quite woven in all the ends, or maybe I did and I didn't cut them. Anyway, this is what it looks like. I used some pretty, um, uh, pretty slick math maybe to make sure I used as much of the yarn as I could. I have a very, very tiny ball left over. And what I did was I knit two of the three balls of the Mojave that I had. This is knit in Mojave by um, Kelborn Yarns, which is a cotton linen blend. Um, I knit two balls and then I knit um, the beginning of one of the top sections. So you knit a few rows and then you do one of these triangles or referred to as a cup in the um, pattern. And then I weighed how much yarn that took and then I ripped that out and I knit until I had uh, enough yarn to finish the tank uh, with a little bit left over. Now this tank has not been blocked yet so I think it will grow a bit in, in the uh, in the washing of it, but I did manage to add quite a bit to the length, and I think that it might be even more um, after I um, block it. So I, what I haven't done, you may notice, is done the drop stitches, and I thought we could do some of those together today. Um, and then I thought I'd finish the drop stitches in time for stash dash, and have this count as a part of my stash dash total. <clears throat> I will show you one other thing that I put on this little sweater tank top top um, to help me both determine where the front is and also just as sort of a design feature. I put this little tag on the front corner. Yeah, I don't know if you can see what it says, if that looks familiar to you at all. I had these made at Christmas time and they're a faux leather tag. They're washable. Um, they go on with this little button and um, I thought I would just put it on the front and that would help me remember where the front is all the time and also just have it be sort of a bit of a design feature. So I ordered about 20 off a seller on Etsy. There's lots of them. Um, and I thought I'd use them and see how I like them. And then if I like them, I could always order more. That's the great thing about Etsy is it keeps track of all your orders and you can simply place another order. So let's, uh, let's drop some stitches. That's not usually something that people get too terribly excited about, but you know what, why not? So the way that this pattern is worked, um, the sort of open work is done by dropping stitches. Now I have one here as you can see and I just thought it might be fun to get some satisfaction out of ripping. And it turns out if you just pull them apart, I think it just drops quite nicely. Ooh, check that, that's very satisfying. Now, as you can see, it, this, this um, pattern is quite clever because there are some shaped stitches um, right next to where you're dropping. Um, and maybe what I'll try and do is just drop this one all the way down to the bottom and we'll see what it looks like um, when it's all the way down. Now, I don't recommend dropping stitches purposefully, although this is something that I do do if I've made a mistake. I don't really have too many qualms about dropping stitches down and picking them up again. I'm very grateful that I don't have to pick these ones up again. I have done patterns where you drop all the way down and then pick up and boy that's a pain. But as you can see this is going actually quite quickly. You have to do um, four of these. This one is going towards an armpit. <laughs> um, there are Four, one, two, there are eight of them. So if you're looking for sort of a very satisfying um, finishing technique, I might recommend the outline tank. And the pattern designer, who is Jessie May, has now come out with some t-shirts and also a pair of shorts that have the same sort of, or same or similar treatment. Um, and when you're dropping the stitches, it's funny when you're dropping stitches on purpose versus having them just slither out of your out of your um, needle. It, it does go quite quickly. And I thought maybe I would try and just finish this up all the way down to the bottom and we'd have a look at it. Um, it's very satisfying. Again, look, check it out. And you don't have to be too precious about it because it's just going all the way down. Um, now I know some people had troubles lining up where their um, 
drop stitches go so I did kind of check to make sure that all my stitches were sort of lined up and in the right spot I'm almost at the bottom oh, that's nice okay check that out not you blue so uh, so I've dropped down this one side it goes um, sort of straight down to the armpit and then down the side of the tank and all the way to the bottom and as I said you can see how that turns out very satisfying so now I've got another seven of those to go but I'm saving that for stash dash um, so I can count my yardage and then I'm actually going to give it a good block and we'll see what it looks like so when it's all finished um, I will try and show you again and maybe even model it for you um, hopefully it's okay as long as it's you know PG and safe to model I will do that for you don't say I don't do anything for you podcast so this was a very satisfying knit it worked up really quite quickly once I started working on it again and gave it more attention and I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's all finished so that's my outline tank um, the other thing that I have that is an almost finished project is a pair of socks. These socks um, were a pair that I cranked out on my circular sock machine. It's a 3D printed circular sock machine and this is on the 76 stitch cylinder. So I just cranked out some men's socks and as you can see I've got a toe and a cuff and a heel. And then on this sock I've got a toe and a heel. Ooh a cuff and uh, all I have left to do is seam up this heel and then I'll have another project that I can count for stash dash so as you can see I'm front loading and I'm totally not cheating because I get to make the rules but um, it helps to be prepared for stash dash um, and it's not too late for you to be prepared for stash dash too um, it turns out that having a circular sock machine is a great way to sort of um, build in some some prepared knitting because um, as you can see I've already started another pair or started the finishing of another pair now this is um, this is a sock tube that I cranked on my 64 stitch um, sock cylinder so this is more of a ladies size and um, this is left some leftovers from nomadic sock yarn in the Neville colorway. This is what a Harry Potter reference to one of the characters. I think she's since renamed it the botanist um, because unfortunately Harry Potter, the stories in the world of Harry Potter are really magical and they're really, um, they mean a lot to a lot of people, but the author has unfortunately be, made some really, um, disappointing comments about gender and um, I think a lot of people are trying to disassociate from or not support JK Rowling and her her political views and I would agree with that so I'm gonna call this the botanist um, it's just a tube that I cranked as you can see I've got the waist yarn on one end and I just picked up stitches and started working a toe on the other end now this is not a very long cylinder as you can see but I should be able to make a pair of shorties that should fit my feet quite nicely. Um, I'll keep you updated. Um, contrast yarn as ever. Sheepies Metropolis in the Warsaw colorway. And I have one more uh, work in progress to share with you today. And that is um, a little t-shirt that I've been working on. I picked up the yarn, if you remember, on uh, LYS Day at the Fiber Nook here in Edmonton. And the yarn is, again, a Sheepies. It's called Skies and it's a fingering weight cotton. Now this yarn is beautiful. It's naturally dyed with indigo, but I'm finding that when I, whenever I knit on this, I get a lot of the blue dye coming off on my hands. Um, and I guess that's not unexpected, um, although it's not, it's not great when that happens. So my plan for this project is to finish knitting it um, and just deal with the fact that my hands get kind of blue it washes off really quickly so it's not a problem and it hasn't stained anything or anything um, but my plan is then to give it a really good wash um, and soak it with some vinegar vinegar is an acid that can help set dyes um, I'm hoping that will be effective um, so I'm going to give it a really good soak with vinegar and then I'm going to rinse it a lot to get as much of the dye out as I can 
um, and then I'll see how it is and I may have to repeat that process but if you're a dyer and you know a lot about dyeing particularly with cotton or fixing dyes to cotton yarn um, I'd love to know more about that um, and I'd love to know if there are some other solutions that I should be looking into um, I'm fairly confident that using some white vinegar should work but again it's going to be one of those uh, trial and errors trials trial and errors I will I will try it and I will let you know um, so anyway the the project itself is the cozy light cardigan no wait scratch that it's the cozy classic light sweater um, and I'll show you where I'm at so I cast on it's a provisional cat not a provisional it's like a tubular cast on and the tubular cast on that I do does not use provisional yarn um, the reason I like it is I, it, I can just get going knitting and I don't have to worry about um, fussing with putting provisional yarn in and taking it out and I think I get a pretty good edge um, as you can see this is my that's my cast on so not too bad the nice thing about this edge though is that because you use the yarn itself um, to sort of it's it's uh, sort of like a tubular long tail cast on and um, what I can do is I can pull on this this end and snug it out because the as you, you can see it kind of snugging um, as you know with tubular cast ons they can be kind of loose um, and I didn't want that for this project so now what I can do is just go ahead and rearrange the stitches until the, I get sort of a cast on that is firm um, but not too loose and that's sort of what I'm looking for this is a bit of a boat neck which will be nice for summer um, and as you can see I've just got my sleeve stitches on hold and I'm working on the body I am uh, doing helical knitting down here and it's I mean it's quite obviously hand dyed yarn and there is some color variation but that's okay um, so yeah I'm about I don't know maybe two inches past the armpits um, and I'm just gonna work on this it's just straight stockinette which is uh, quite lovely knitting and um, again I think it's a project that I'll be able to finish um, up for stash dash yay um, I'm hoping that this is a nice cotton t-shirt that I can just wear um, for summer and spring and I think that's that's what I'm, what I'm aiming for anyway the sleeves will be I think simply finished with some ribbing so it's gonna be a quick a quick bind off they'll be short um, and it is quite a deep rag I think it seems like quite, quite a deep raglan so I think it'll be a nice comfy t-shirt kind of fit but yeah that is my cozy classic light by Jessie May I'll throw some pictures up here and that's all I have on the needles right now but I do have plans um, you know me I knit a lot so uh, in classic Jolene style there is a new knit along coming up it's a um, quick knit along hosted by Andrea Mowry for a new hat pattern that she has coming out and um, the hat pattern is called flicker and flame uh, I'll put a picture of that hat right here and it is knit with um, some spin cycle yarns you can use the dyed in the wool which is a sport weight um, and or you can use the dream state which is a worst weight now it just so happens I have a bit of both in my stash um, a f months ago I had picked up um, some of spin cycles um, sort of mill ends you can get like a, a mix of some and the ends of um, of runs where it's not enough to make a whole ball of yarn and they just sort of mix them together and sell them off um, so I have some of that in the dream state this is a this is a portion of one of those sorry I'm not camera ready how embarrassing now I don't know what the name of this colorway is but um, it looks like this in the in the center it's sort of a nice berry color and then it fades out to more reds with some greens and golds and browns towards the edges so this is the worsted weight the pattern calls for 25 grams and that's what I've got so this is the contrast color and I think originally I thought I'd use a brown 
for the main color, but I think I'm going to use this white. This is a yarn that is milled uh, in Alberta, not far from me. It's called Custom Woolen Mills. It's a really beautiful um, worsted spun um, cream yarn. It is two ply and in 112 grams or four ounces there's 198 meters so it should be a worsted maybe a slightly heavier worsted but I think with that it'll make a really nice um, flicker and flame hat for walking dogs so that's that's one hat um, the other hat that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use some dyed in the wool. Now this one is a whole skein that I had. It's called Truth Bomb, and uh, it starts out with these sort of foresty greens, and then it, it blends into pinks and reds and golds, and then it's more rainbowy as you get further into the ball. So my plan is to use this um, with some Sheepies Metropolis in the Miami colorway. Um, as a background. So this will have some high contrast and some less contrast in it, uh, but I think that'll be an interesting look. And um, this will be another of the Flicker and Flame hats. Now the Flicker and Flame hat, um, again, is a color work hat. It should work up reasonably quickly. And I'm looking forward to having a couple more hats to either have for myself or to throw in my gift basket. The Knit Along is hosted by Andrea Mowry. Um, it begins on May 27th and it goes till May 31st, so it's just over a weekend. But I'm hoping that I can knit up a couple hats for that Knit Along. And it just so happens that that will be captured in Stash Dash. What are the odds? Don't you love it when things work out? And that's all I have. That's all I have really to share with you today. I've got a few small projects, some palette cleansing hats, and then um, and then I have to decide what to knit after that. Um, I've had some patterns that I have been wanting to work on. Um, they've been in my queue for quite some time, and so I'm just trying to decide when the right time to start those is. One of those patterns is the night shift shawl. This is a shawl that originally calls for Dream State, uh, which is the worsted yarn made by Spin Cycle. But I'm thinking that maybe I'd like to make it out of um, the dyed in the wool, which is the sport weight. I have a lot of odds and ends of balls, um, small balls that I think I'm just going to roll the dice and see what happens. Part of the magic of the dyed in the wool or Spin Cycle yarns in general is the color gradients that you get mixed with the barber polling and I think that I'm just going to start it and see what happens and then just grab new balls as I need them uh, working in the pattern until the shell is uh, a decent size and then I'll bind it off. That's my plan anyway. Um, I'm not in a rush for that shawl. I think I'd like to have it done by the fall so I think it might be something I just pick up and have uh, on the go um, throughout the summer months and then also I think I'd like to knit up a few more sock tubes into socks um, as a way of sort of contributing to stash my stash dash tools and also contributing to my uh, Christmas gift pile. That will all be um, dependent on my new co-host slash producer. Um, Having a puppy, it turns out, takes a bit of time, uh, but I'm okay with that. He's a great addition to our family, and uh, he's certainly uh, a light for our daughters and uh, my husband. He's been bringing us a lot of joy in the short time that we've had him. So um, I will continue to knit when I can, um, and if not, I'll be having some planning meeting planning meetings with my new producer to come up with some new content for you. It could be that we include some of our walks uh, in the river valley around Edmonton. Um, I'm sure that Blue will become a model on the podcast at some point uh, as fall approaches, but he's going to need to uh, get a little bit bigger before he's ready to model any uh, doggy knits. If you know uh, a lot about having puppies, I'd love to know more. Send me a comment. 
Um, we're very new at this and we're learning as we go. If you have doggy sweater ideas, let me know in the comments below. If you're taking part in Stash Dash, uh, I'd love to know what your goals are. I haven't quite set mine. They tend to come in five kilometer um, increments and I haven't decided if I'm gonna try for 10 kilometers, which is a fair amount of knitting, but perhaps achievable with a circular sock machine. Um, are you planning on taking part? Let me know, I'd love to hear. Um, I guess that's really all I have to share with you today. It's a sunny, sunny day outside today. We've had some cold weather. We had snow this week. Um, so I'm looking forward to maybe going for a little walk with my new walking partner, um, getting some knitting in, relaxing a little bit with my husband who has the day off today. So I hope that you are able to enjoy your springtime. I hope that you have some knitting plans that you're excited about. Maybe they include Stash Dash and maybe they don't. Um, I'd love to hear about them. Please let me know. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me in blue and our knitting. I hope that you have a chance to do something that you really enjoy doing in the next couple of weeks. Blue and I plan on knitting a lot.